Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program. Hello, fuckers. And uh, today I want to talk about what do you need in a luxury goods collection? That's right. What are the key essential pieces? And um, it's quite funny. <clears throat> Many years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, Archie. Many years ago, uh, it was frowned upon to be a collector. You were a bit weird, you know. You were like the model train collector, a little bit weird, a hoarder. But uh, now that our society has turned so materialistic, it's all the rage. We're allowed to be materialistic. We're allowed to have 20 wristwatches if we fucking feel like it. It'll all be dandy. And, uh, okay, let's have a look. What's the basics? What's the basics for having a beautiful luxury goods collection? And this was my start. This was my forte to luxury goods. I said to myself, well, Archibald, what do you really want? And I wanted the best of everything. That was the, the common items that my hand touched. I wanted the best. I wanted the best. I didn't want shit. And uh, I started off, I really wanted a beautiful, an absolutely beautiful, I wanted a beautiful wristwatch. That was the first luxury notch on the bedpost. I wanted a really classy, nice wristwatch. Something I could be proud of. Something that told people to fuck off. And uh, I, I went for a Rolex Explorer 1. So that was my first forte into luxury goods. And uh, then then I started, you know, you, you've got your beautiful luxury watch. Then you start to get into luxury type things. And I'm thinking, you know what I need? I need a luxury fountain pen. So the, the first, you know, reasonable fountain pen I bought was a Mont Blanc. That's right. It was just a classic black with gold trim Mont Blanc. And uh, that was my, my fountain pen. And then, you know, you think to yourself, well, actually, I'd really, the fountain pen's useful, but I'd really also like a, uh, a normal conventional type biro. So I got a rollerball, which was a little bit, you know, a little bit unique because the cap came off on a, a rollerball. And then you add a pencil and, you know, before you know it, you're a Mont Blanc, you know, aficionado. But, uh, I mean... I sort of, you know, now I'm an experienced luxury goods hoarder. I don't, Mont Blanc does nothing for me. I'm a Montegrappa. The best thing about Montegrappa is it's not a Mont Blanc. And uh, so, so there we go. So I had my watch, some a fountain pen, some luxury pens. And then you start to say, well, what other luxury things, what utiles of satisfaction can I arrange, can I derive from my next purchase? It's those consumer dollars. And uh, I started thinking to myself, what's going to make me happy? And, uh, you know, then I went and got a pair of, now I'd say these were semi-luxury, semi-luxury optics. I got a pair of Ray-Bans. <clears throat> I thought I was Tom Cruise in Top Gun. And uh, <clears throat> it's amazing what a bit of fucking product placement will do for you. And uh, yeah, so that was sort of, I, I don't think Ray-Ban's a luxury brand. I wear Cartier optics now, but uh, they, they, they were pretty cool. And uh, so, so you can see, this is how you're starting to get a taste for luxury. And then of course, you need a luxury wallet and uh, I, I got a, uh, an Oriton wallet. That's right, the Australian luxury goods maker, Oriton. And uh, then, you know, this, this is how the basics for a collection, they develop. They develop nice and slowly there. You know, you sort of, you build on it there. And uh, before you know it, you've then, you know, so, so there you go. I think, you know, what, what do men need? I think they need a watch. They need a writing instrument. They need a pair of sunglasses, a wallet, a briefcase. That's what they need. I think those are the five, the five essentials that every man must have. <clears throat> so let's go through that list again. Number one, they need a quality wristwatch. Number two, they need a fine writing instrument. Number three, 
they need a nice pair of sunglasses, the optics. Number four, they need a luxury wallet. And number five, they need a luxury briefcase. Please no man bags, please. Please no man bags. Okay, I will accept designer man bags are okay, semi okay, but preferably, you know, if you want that ultimate fuck off look, you need a nice hard case Vuitton's briefcase. You, you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, I could walk into any bank any time with my Louis Vuitton President Classier Adios, my white gold Calatrava strapped to my wrist with my Mont Blanc, sorry, Montagrappa, the Monty, Monty, the Montagrappa in my pocket and go in and get a $30 million loan just using my good taste as security. That's right, I can just use my good taste as security. And uh, this is the wonderful thing. You know, you get the nice balanced collection. And, uh, you know, after you've achieved that, then you want to start thinking about, well, what's a second time piece? If you've got a sports watch as your first watch, you'd be looking at something a little bit more dressy. If you've got a dress watch as your first watch, you'd be looking at something more sporty. So there we go. The nice consumer cycle keeps going. Consumers keep buying. And uh, I get more fans on the Archie Luxury channel. I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you think the essential building blocks of a decent luxury goods collection for a man are. See you later, fuckers. <laughs>